Hi, this is MXUX. I just want to go through a SWOT analysis. I think this is a uh, good time to do this for Lordstown Motors. Uh, I'm going to try to be direct and brief here. Let's see if we can go through this. Uh, the strengths right now of Lordstown Motors, or I've got it calling it here LEX, there's a commercial BEV certified and homologated delivered to customers, has production cost advantages, that is the battery electric vehicle, the endurance. Uh, there, so there is a BEV pickup truck, which is fleet centered, uh, which is in demand. That is the main strength of Lordstown Motors right now. Uh, they have a new BV, uh, MIH BEV program confirmed, but the details have not worked out yet. That's a second strength. A third strength is they are watching their cash, and they have $200 million, I think, and don't quote me, I think it's $250 million or perhaps a bit more with the uh, monies from Foxconn so far on the new uh, MIH program deal. So that may be 270. Um, their burn rate was high last quarter because they started production. It should be less. But, you know, the burn rate's going to be somewhere between 50 and 90 million, something like that per quarter, I believe. So that's where we are right there. Um, the weaknesses. Now we've got uh, those are the main strengths right now. Again, BEV for sale. New MIH BEV program, fleet program, is confirmed. That's a big deal. And they do have a positive cash balance. Weakness. Stock price. The stock has dropped below uh, one, $1. It faces potential NASDAQ delisting. Uh, depending on how long that goes on, um, that is not good. Um, the BV recalls, there have been two of the endurance, and I would say that these are not, as recalls go, that big. I believe the Lightning has had nine, or is it 19? So this is fairly common. These are not, these are th second and third tier supplier problems, even fourth tier supplier problems. Now, uh, so we have the stock price, and I, uh, and I do believe there may be some stock manipulation going on here. I have another video on that, but it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, right now it's facing a potential delisting. Uh, and uh, the last, um, and the BV recalls, which these may be resolved, there is a video out of an endurance driving around Detroit, which implies to me that all the uh, recall problems have been resolved. Uh, again, we have funding. Um, there's capital requirements that need to be met. The MIH project needs to be approved. Okay, now the with, with the approval of the uh, MIH project, and I don't have the exact details in front of me, but 100 million uh, of that 170 million, I believe 50 to 70 million have been paid already. The 100 million pending is uh, provided they can work out the details to be earmarked for the MIH program, which Lordstown Motors is going to develop, and. Um, that is a weakness. It's not done yet. And the BEV, uh, the Endurance, needs an OEM partner uh, to go into full production. And that is another weakness. So, potential delisting, the recalls, this may not be an issue anymore, and the funding. The MAH project needs approval and OEM partnership. Now, the opportunities for Lordstown Motors, unrequited fleet demand. There is just 
a black hole of demand for BV fleet vehicles, of which Lordstown Motors is. And with the MIH project program slash program will even be a bigger fleet BEV provider. And these are the federal, municipal, municipal, commercial, retail, you name it. Hertz, um, th there is just no end to the demand for BEV fleet vehicles. It's one of three BEV pick, uh, pickup trucks in production right now. Rivian, their fleet vehicle is their van, which they have, by contract, uh, have to devote all production of that to Amazon. So there's no competition there. Ford has the uh, Lightning Pro, which uh, is barely in production. No one's getting any, and uh, that's not really competition. Uh, GM has a series of fleet uh, vehicles. No one's making any kind of dent in the fleet market because they're making so much money selling high-priced BEVs. Uh, so, you know, right time, right product. Um, asset light model. The, the model of uh, Lord Sound Motors is uh, limits to capital requirements. They don't have to build the new plants that Rivian's building. They don't have to go through, you know, all the maintenance of uh, maintaining a plant and keeping it uh, going while they're not in production or doing changes and so forth. It's a very, it's a very good model. Uh, I think uh, other companies are going to follow this model in the future. Um, they have $100 million of funding earmarked for the MIH program. So that's pending, provided they can get the CFIS approval and bang out the details on that. They need to set milestones and so forth. And this is, this is something I've been thinking about, which hasn't been openly stated, but this is... Uh, Lordstown Motors will own, uh, I believe, this MIH uh, program, this fleet program, fleet BEV program, based on the MIH platform. Uh, what they develop, because you see, this is my way of thinking on this. Um, this they're not paying, it's not payment for service. They're buying stock which is transferring money to Lordstown Motors, and the condition of that stock purchase is that that money is to be applied to a certain program. So to my mind, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Lordstown Motors is going to be the beneficiary of this program, and the MIH program is an open source program. So this is really a proof of concept, uh, although they've had some other MIH program uh, in Singapore and so forth, vehicles built um, the model. What is it? Uh, anyway, um, they have done it before, but this is really the the main proving ground for an MIH platform program. So multiple vehicles. And they said it's going to be fleet. It's going to address different fleet needs than the Endurance does. So they're going to have the Endurance and other fleet vehicles. So these, these are very... There's a lot of opportunities here. There's demand, there's product. Um, the business model is efficient. Um, so, you know, and this, this other, the new program is funded, $100 million. Supposedly time to market, cost to market is supposed to be reduced. That may be enough to get to uh, a working model uh, with the MIH program. We'll have to see. Um, now let's get to the threats. The ride stock price has dropped uh, below a dollar. Um, this is a, not a positive development. I think there may be some manipulation here. They have alluded to that in one of their uh, SEC filings. But it doesn't matter if it's uh, manipulated or not. It has fallen. Um, it faces uh, below a dollar for a certain amount of time. It faces delisting by NASDAQ. Um, so they have to take actions to get the price up. Uh, they're facing a reverse split of, uh, I don't know, 3 to 1 or 15 to 1, which I am in favor of because 
really what Lord Steinmuller has to do right now is stay in the game. Riot also faces dilution um, because they're going to be issuing more shares. They're recommending issuing more shares, which I also support. As I say, all Riot has to do right now is stay in the game. Uh, that's all they have to do. And whatever they have to do that, in my opinion, that's what they should do. Now, uh, Lord Sun Motors faces cash depletion without earnings or funding, slash funding. So, their revenues uh, on the sale of the endurance, the endurance is not, popular, uh, is not uh, profitable right now because it is not ramped. So, without uh, earnings or funding, uh, they're going to face cash depletion. Um, so if you look at what's going on, um, the, I believe the production of the first 500 endurances is, is financed. I think that's baked in. I think the MIH program, at least a hundred million dollars of it is baked in. And, um, so what we're looking at is operational cash burn. And again, I guess that could go between... 50 and 90 million. So you can do the math on that. Um, so we have cash. So we've always had the, as a startup, pre revenue startup cash issues. Now there is a stock price issue. Um, there is limited information coming uh, from Lordstown Motors. And this may be because fo both Foxconn and Lordstown have to agree on the information. Uh, according to the uh, agreement they entered into the sale of the plant, they have to agree to what information is released. And for whatever reason, we do not have a lot of information coming out of Lord Sound Motors. Um, we have SEC filings, but I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing, but there is limited information. Um, and the other, uh, and that I believe is, is part of the stock price issue. Um, thirdly, the government is, is, is the government dragging its feet impending the CFIS approval? Uh, because the CFIS approval is required for the stock program to go through, for the stock investment to go through, and so forth. So, um, that's another issue. So, um... I mean, we could have government dragging. If you put your tinfoil hat on, you could say the stock price has been manipulated downwards. I have a video on this that I have, I'm putting together a possibility. Um, or there may be macro issues not related to Lordstown that have driven down the stock price as well. There's also the recall. But as I said, in my opinion, the recall is not as bad as it appears to be at first glance um so uh anyway that's where we sit with the threats um let's move forward i have action items here um lordstown needs to resume endurance production and sales okay even if it's a limited number of trucks coming off the line they need to, you know, run that up the flagpole and show everyone that uh, the recall has been resolved and production is underway, and that the, they're being that products are being delivered to customers, and that they can successfully handle a recall. That's number one. Number two, uh, they have, to, in my opinion, not I'm not advising you to buy, sell, or hold any stock. And ride, of course, is a high risk in, investment. Please seek a, uh, professional advice before investing in any stock. Uh, but uh, number two here is uh, they need to secure the stock price. LEX does. They need to do, in my opinion, a reverse split if necessary. And as well, if they could generate a positive announcement on the vehicle, on the fleet program, um, any type of positive announcement on securing a partner, on, you know, Neovaji doing some type of deal, 
any of this is going to boost the stock price. So whatever they have to do to boost the stock price, that's they need to do that. Um, they need to finalize the MIH program. They need to finalize the terms. They need to get the CFIS, CFIS approval uh, to get that capital, to get that program underway. And as I said, I believe Lord Simon Motors is going to own that program once they've uh, launched it. So a lot is hinging on the stock price. Uh, a lot of it is hinging on positive news, catalyst, and uh, CFIS approval. And, and lastly, they need to secure an OEM partner for mass production of the BEV, of the Endurance. And I believe they've been working on this. I have another video pending. I did a preview of the earnings call, and I said the issues that should have been a, uh, approached. And uh, I, I went over that video again, and I, and, I, and I compared it to what was announced. And, um, you know, one of the keys there is this OEM partner. I think there is... A, ch a good chance that this could happen, especially in the market. I mean, uh, all of these are uh, like a blockchain. They're all linked together. Uh, but uh, certainly, uh, if, you, if you took a look at the fleet market and you look at the BV pickup truck market, um, I mean, uh, to, to be able to get into a program, you got to figure that, you know, uh, to, to launch a BEV pickup truck is going to cost you 500 million, you know, 900 million, a billion dollars. Uh, and to get into the endurance uh, for half that price, a third of that price, whatever it may be, I think it's a no brainer. Brainer. But uh, these are the things that uh, uh, Lord Sam Motors has to do. So, by way of summary, uh, Lord Stemmer is in a great position to take advantage of the stored, uh, shortage of fleet BVs with the Endurance and the MIH program that they are developing, which I believe they will launch. And again, uh, cost to market and time to market are supposed to be cut by 50% with this program, which would mean, you know, they could have, uh, uh, Hightower said he could have a car out in two years if it's cut by 50%, that's one year. Next year, this time, this other fleet program could be underway, and there's a shortage of fleet BEVs. Uh, finance and capital issues are the rub. Uh, Chairman of the board, Daniel Niavaji, has connections to Hertz, where he was a former bird board member. Hertz, of course, is one of the biggest fleet buyers in the country. And high, high finance, uh, you know, he's a former icon, uh, ICAN, ICANN uh, guy. Uh, so he does have uh, connections. Um, so it would appear to be that the ball right now is in Neovaji's court. Uh, he appears to be critical at this point. And I have down here, as I said, uh, in, in a... In a uh, what's called a uh, podcast. Um, they mentioned that Rivian in the past has spoken with Foxconn. So is Rivian a potential uh, partner for the endurance? Um, they want to introduce a low cost line of battery electric vehicles. So, you know, I think there's potential there. I don't know what the status on that is, that is speculation on my part, but that would be an example of an OEM partner. Uh, Foxconn is investing in the Lordstown BEV plant heavily. Fisker Pair is pending, Monarch Tractor is in production. They're building a battery plant in Wisconsin. By the way, next door to that battery plant Microsoft is putting in a gigantic data center. Initially, Foxconn had said their data center was going to be in Wisconsin. I am wondering if uh, Microsoft is going to be part of that speculation on my part. Uh, there are even they they have stated to, to the Ta Taiwan press that there are even more investments underway, uh, but those are unknown at this time. So. Foxconn is 
you know, all in on BEVs. They're all in on Lordstown. There's Lordstown, the location, Lordstown, their hub for BEV manufacturing. They're pulling together a really strong infrastructure there. And uh, remember, Foxconn operates the battery line for Lordstown Motors, which Lordstown Motors owns, and the hub motor manufacturing line for Lordstown Motors, which Lordstown Motor Motors owns at the Lordstown facility. So Foxconn uh, is all in. Now, uh, via stock ownership from Foxconn, the via the stock ownership, the de, fin uh, de facto financial support, Fox is at an ownership limit, I believe, once this deal is, is consummated. So uh, to go, go further would would uh, would change the status i believe with the sec and with cephas and certainly with fox's board so i think uh that the at least this tranche of financial support uh ends with this agreement for this mih program now there are other ways of doing that but i'm just saying that's where we are. So, so um, Lordstown Motors is in the cap in the captain's chair right now. They need to originate developments solutions to get into production and secure funding. They have had creative so solutions in the past. So, um, they do have a creative approach to finance. And they have come up with solutions in the past on, you know, things that surprised people. And certainly they are capable of doing that again. Um, they, they need a catalyst as far as the development. So obviously, um, as I said, the return of production and deliveries of endurance would be one. An OEM partner would be another um and whatever creative solution they might want to come up with but this is where we are uh i believe uh, with lordstown motors and there's a lot of strengths and a lot of opportunities and we're now at the point where um you know uh we have to um get into production again and find a solution to the uh, OEM partner they're looking for, whatever shape that may take. Um, looking forward to the uh, um, stockholders meeting coming up. And I think, um, to my mind, the most interesting thing here is that uh, Lord Sound Motors will own that MIH program, fleet vehicle program, uh, once they develop it, in my mind. Uh, so this is, I think this alone increases the value of the stock uh, or the potential of the company. Um, certainly with the fleet demand that's out there, I think, you know, they're going to basically have two product lines, an MIH product line and their own product line. Both fleet uh, directed and pushed at a, a, a fleet market that's starving. They simply have to um, do these other tasks, uh, produce a catalyst, um, work out a creative funding solution, and uh, get an OEM partner of sorts for production. Okay, this is MXUX. Thanks for watching.